Here's a trig substitution integral where we're in a very familiar spot. We have a square root that we want to get rid of by expressing its interior as a perfect square by using a trig substitution. And so I have a constant minus a variable thing squared. What I'm thinking about here is this identity, the first Pythagorean trig identity. And I can get this form of a constant minus a variable thing squared from that. If I make the substitution sine theta, there's a minor adjustment to make. I'm going to say let x equal 2 sine theta. And the point of that is that when I square x, I'm going to get a 4 sine squared theta. Then I can factor the 4 out of the square root. I also have to transform dx. That's 2 cosine theta d theta. And then there's an x squared that will appear in that denominator. So let's go ahead and make the substitution. And I've replaced x with 2 sine theta, so I have 4 minus 4 sine squared theta. dx is a 2 cosine theta d theta, and then I have this denominator of 4 sine squared theta. Okay, we can pull a 4 out of the square root in the numerator, and that becomes a 2. But there's another 2 in the numerator, and there's a 4 in the denominator. So all of those constants cancel out. Inside the square root, I now have a 1 minus sine squared theta. And my whole point here was to get a cosine squared out of that and then square root it. So that becomes cosine theta. My integral is now the integral of cosine squared theta over sine squared theta d theta. So now we're stuck with a trigonometric integral that has its own challenges. And the first thing that occurs to me here is Let's go ahead and write the cosine squared in terms of the sine function. So I'm just using the same identity again. And when I do that, one of the terms will get really simple because of dividing by sine squared. The other one's going to be like a cosecant squared thing. And I, and I think I remember how to do that. So let's get that done. Cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. And so my first term is going to be 1 over sine squared, which is a cosecant squared. My second term is just a 1, which I certainly know how to integrate. Then I have to remember the derivative of the cotangent gives me negative cosecant squared. And so in other words, the antiderivative of this piece is going to be a negative cotangent. Antiderivative of that second piece is just a theta. So I have negative cotangent theta minus theta plus an arbitrary constant. Now the problem isn't done because we have to go back in terms of x, which is the integral that we were given. And to get this done, we have to sub out for theta in terms of x. So if I go back to my original substitution, I had x equals 2 sine theta. Divide that by 2 and invert the sine function. And theta is the angle whose sine is x over 2. And that's not so hard to deal with in the second term for my answer. But in the first term, I need to get the cotangent of the angle whose sine is x over 2. And the way I prefer to do this is by drawing a little triangle. And we're going to put theta right here. And theta is the angle whose sine is x over 2. OK, so the sine of theta is x over 2. The opposite of our hypotenuse is x over 2. Then we can find the missing side here just by using the Pythagorean theorem. And in practice, once you've done enough of these, you can start to kind of guess. And let's try that. If I square the square root of 4 minus x squared, I get 4 minus x squared plus an x squared, just doing the Pythagorean theorem here, would give me a 4, which is the same as the hypotenuse squared. So that checks out. If you're not comfortable with that, you can always give a name to this side, like question mark, and then plug into the Pythagorean theorem. Question mark squared plus x squared equals 2 squared. So question mark. If I subtract the x squareds from both sides, it gives me a 4 minus x squared, and I square root it. All right, the point of that is it now allows me to find the cotangent of this angle. And the cotangent is 1 over the tangent, or the reciprocal of tangent. So I'm going to take adjacent over opposite. So I end up with a negative cotangent of this angle. That's a root 4 minus x squared all divided by x. 
minus theta itself, which is the inverse sine of x over 2 plus an arbitrary constant. 